Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to the online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture. So, this uh, lecture will cover up different structural material, uh, this is lecture number 15. So far whatever uh, we have seen over uh, last lectures, so we study about different structural form and also we know the structural property like acting depending on the force applied on it. How the internal force will behave like compression or tension or torsion. But also that time I mentioned about that it will depend not only with the geometric shape that we select for a structural element, but also the material because material will have certain properties which will actually give you the hints that whether it is uh, suitable for your structure or not. So, we start today's lecture discussing on structural material. So, selection of structural material for a structure is the most crucial aspect for the design because when we discussed about the element selection for a structural uh, member, then also we talked about uh, the material because the material based on is you know uh, the property that uh, the density or the particles how they close to each other or the porosity. So, it depends on that structural material. Uh, we can achieve some kind of you know uh, stability in the overall arrangement and all. The strength of material affect the load carrying capacity, no doubt about it. So, whenever a material you use a material having high strength will have high resistance again applied load and it will not collapse easily. So, it will also uh, affect the you know decision on making the span that you can design with that material or the height of the building or height of the structure that you can determine based on the material selection. It also says the physical property of the material that determine the internal force and how good it is to act on that. There are few materials which will help in uh, you know compression, there are few materials will come to know which are good for the tensile force. So, we know compression and tension. So, based on that here also we will just uh, recap some of the things and then uh, basically it will uh, be uh, the one of the crucial part while design structural system for a building. So, basic few properties uh, the six properties that we look for a building material or the structural material like the strength, then density, then hardness, ductility or the brittleness elasticity and toughness. So, these are six basic properties of a material we are looking for. Let us start with the strength. So, uh, this is basically the ability of a material withstand loading applied on it. What exactly this sentence means? So, strength of a material means it is basically will determine the ability when you apply load on it. It may be tension, it may be compression, it may be a bending, may be a torsion, but like to resist again the applied load is determining the strength of the material. So, the compression uh, is another strength where ability of a material to prevent structure against pushing load. So, basically when uh, I take this example of the pin, so we try to push them. Okay? So, I put pressure with my finger to this. So, this pain will try to compress. Okay? Depending on the strength, it will have uh, like a response to that. And when we go for the tension one, so it is the pulling one to push and pull. So, when we try to pull this pain uh, like from taking this particular part away from each other, so that is basically the uh, pulling uh, load applied on it. So, it will depend on the strength uh, that how it will react, it will resist that or not, but definitely depending on the material and its physical characteristics, 
the limit of the compress compression like to resist again compression or resist again tension will vary. The next one is basically the material density. So, exactly this is to be uh, determined by the mass by uh, the volume. So, it is in SI unit you can say the kg per cubic meter. So, normally if you get a material where you have high density, high mass on this like say uh, if I compare the same amount of volume and one is your wood and other is thermocol. So, you know the density and we compare the same volume of steel. So, you can easily compare the you know uh, the step like the resistance that it can. So, higher the density is the higher power performance and higher strength this is in general and again it will give uh, the great protection. So, if I take 1 cubic uh, meter of thermocol and 1 cubic meter of wood and 1 cubic meter of steel. So, you can get some idea you can all can answer that which one will have higher strain to you know get withstand with the applied load and the answer is very simple it will be the steel. But if I compare it with some say take another example the thermocol and a uh, like clay block so again clay block will be more and then like that will determine that based on our need based on the load resistance that we require to make our structure we will select the right material based on the density. So, density is basically we need to remember this is mass per unit volume. So, if you take the same unit so when your mass are more ok and uh, compared to the material the components are far away. So, you will be selecting the higher density, but along with that there are problems when you go for higher density. So, basically uh, it is very difficult to handle it with. So, it is very easy to work with thermocol. So, normally you know for uh, making models and all we use some lighter material to that, but at the same time if you want to do with something like wood or maybe some metal. So, the you know it will be difficult. So, in uh, case of the higher density the material weight uh, like in given unit uh, volume. So, weight will be more and then hence it will be difficult to work with and that obviously having impact on the cost. So, whenever you go for that such kind of material cost will going high, but in it is again a general uh, statement, but sometimes you may find that the cost of a lightweight material is even more than a heavyweight material, but definitely in, in that case the lightweight material uh, may be superior in terms of resisting with the applied load on that particular you know portion of the structure than the heavy material. So, the second property density is another important to select upon the material for that come to the third property that is the hardness ok. So, this is basically the ability of a material to resistance against the permanent deformation. So, if we say that ok this again I take this example of the pen I have. So, this pen is very hard why I am saying that when I apply try to apply the load. So, it is not bending ok. Uh, with this load, but definitely if I put more pressure then it will go for a deformation, but the property that is actually resisting this uh, particular force and not going for a deformation is called hardness. Now, if you take uh, instead of uh, you this pane plastic which is made of plastic you take a piece of thermocol maybe look like a pane and then you do this experiment then probably you say that the hardness is very low. You take a wood then they will have something, you take uh, like uh, steel you will get something. If you take aluminum compared to steel then you get that steel is you know harder than that aluminum. So, uh, this is very important that uh, the hardness will uh, resist permanent deformation under a sharp load and also it is related to the steepness and temper ok. 
So, in that case what we can say that temper glass normally we being used in smartphone and all. So, it will give the steepness so that steepness what we know that uh, due to the steepness it will prevent the you know even buckling of something. So, deformation it will resist. So, also provide resistance to building, bending as you know scratching and also you uh, have this abrasions or cutting. So, take example of say a diamond. So, if you see uh, a diamond, so it is very hard to you know make a scratch or even to cut. So, that is a example of the hardness. So, sometimes it uh, may apply to the hardness of the structural material or sometimes it may be uh, the non-structural material the glass that we look for. Greater the hardness of the material, greater the resistance. So, always we look for a material of higher hardness while selecting it where this kind of you know we need to prevent that permanent deformation. Come to the ductility and brittleness, they are uh, used side by side. So, we need to know it very carefully, so that uh, we can understand the term exactly. So, ductility is the property of a material which is ability to deform without fracture. So, what is fracture? Say I just try to pull this. So, what will happen? If I put enormous force, okay. so what will happen? So, first you will see that there is some deformation, it will not immediately break. So, you will find that you know the thickness of this particular you know cross section of this pane getting reduced and then after certain time it will actually break. So, that is basically the fracture, but at the same time if you take a example of a chalk you put the pressure hardly will find any deformation it cracks. So, there are materials which are good in this uh, you know producing that they will deform before fracture and that the property is called ductile, ductile property or this overall event is your ductility. So, if you see this image, so this is electrical wear. So, when you just uh, you know try to pull them or just you know to uh, give a deformation, so it will not really break. So, here this is one example that you can get it. The other one there are materials which are very brittle in nature, say for example, a glass, you try to deform it, you put extra force, it actually breaks. So, here also these are some uh, of the metals where they are not really uh, giving a sign of deformation and they just break it. So, materials with high ductility is preferred as they are more able to indicate the structural failure very important. If you make a building, so building is to protect us definitely, but if there is some abnormal behavior due to some faulty design or maybe due to some uncertain uh, activity or maybe there is a huge earthquake. So, their oscillation start and building will try to collapse, but it should give some time so that we can just uh, go out and put ourselves in a safe position which alternatively we call evacuation. So, they will elongate the evacuation. So, when we use such material having good ductility, they will give us the indication that this structure is going to fail. So, it will give some time. So, it is very important features of uh, any structural material that we should use. The, in the other hand, the brittleness is the property of a material which can break easily okay, without significant deformation. You take a biscuit, you just give a pressure breaks okay. and this is one example like definitely that will be not a structural material, but you know the materials will uh, brittleness basically absorb relatively little energy prior to fracture. Okay even those in high strength. So, even this uh, uh, material is having high strength because of the high density, but the property is something like that this brittleness. Okay. 
So, it has a relation with the temperature deviation also. So, some steel if you uh, like put it in the frozen temperature will be become brittle. So, we have to see that uh, okay, it, it is not a particular property of a material that always give me the best result. So, in this case looking at uh, this particular you know metal, this particular cylindrical uh, pipe. So, strength is okay good, but when you apply this particular thing especially the tension. So, uh, due to that pulling, so it will immediately crack and not give any indication. So, this is something very important. Even the glass, okay, it will uh, not really deform and depending on the glass even we can also you know improve on the ductility and uh, reduce the brittleness. So, that we can use it as a structural material. Come to the elasticity that already we explained in some of the property where it is the ability to of a pro, uh, you know of a material which will deform um, for a applied load and when we release the load it will uh, try to get back its original uh, form. So, if a material can really do the 100 percent uh, you know return back to the original position. So, we can call it is perfectly elastic and where there is no such property observed so inelastic. So, this is basically uh, the concept, but in reality we cannot have uh, such material which is totally like 100 percent uh, elastic and the formula like we use the elastic modulus which to be calculated by the stress by unit strain. So, stress is force by area and strain unit strain is basically the deformation and so in this picture I just want to show you. So, this is the actual length may be L and now after deformation. So, this is delta L. So, strain uh, will be uh, in the unit strain here it is delta L by L and the force applied like if this is the case and the area then force by area is your stress and then the ratio between this will give you the modulus. Now, come to the toughness. Okay. So, we discussed about strength, then we discussed about hardness, density and in this case elasticity. Now, the toughness this is the ability of a material resist fracture when stress. What exactly it does mean? Okay. So, we uh, let us clear this uh, from this image. So, uh, in this case this is also the ability of a material to absorb energy and physically deform without fracturing. So, when we compare it to the brittleness, it will absorb less and break immediately, it is just the reverse. So, in this case if you say the uh, building material is tough, so you hammer it. So, you are putting extra pressure and it is anchored at the bottom. So, it is not really breaking at this particular load and it is giving a deformation bending. So, this is a tough material. When you consider the brittle, the moment you put a pressure it will absorb very less energy and then breaks immediately. So, this is one GIF image that I have taken from this website given here. So, this is a small piece of the material and there is a you know pendulum kind of movement. So, it put a pressure on this and this is basically uh, the exposure. So, if uh, this particular piece of metal will just come out with these deformations, we can say that it is having the good tip uh, you, know, you know toughness, but if it breaks into pieces and not passing this experiment is not having the toughness. So, this is also important parameter. Now, looking at that over the years we have used an event in the prehistoric age and the contemporary architecture, we have seen the use of different kind of materials. So, here we will focus on that, we start with the timber. Timber uh, can resist tension and compression as well uh, with equal facility and thus the bending. So, it will act really the wooden batten, they can uh, also take uh, this particular you know uh, the tension at the bottom if it is uh, like slab and the compression at the top. It is also lightweight material compared to 
other uh, in that category and high ratio of strain to weight. So, whenever you use some material the achieved strength also compared to the weight because whenever you go for a material itself having high uh, self weight so that will add on to your dead load. So, we want something which will have good strength, good density, good elasticity as well as it will have the lighter in weight uh, so that it can really go with that. Can be relatively easily joined together because you know uh, like wood are produced from the tree and it has a limitation. So, uh, to create huge structure we need to join multiple such pieces. So, this join is very easy with different kind of you know cross joint then dovetail joint. So, different carpentry joint we can make the structure huge. It need not to be a single piece wood uh, structure. Uh, but uh, the other important thing is that if timber is used uh, in a proper way or treated way, so it can be reused a portion of that or maybe like we can go for it uh, like reusing that kind of building material in future in some form or other form. So, it is renewable, but the disadvantage with the timber yes. So, it is susceptible to fire. So, it is having that uh, you know tendency. So, if something somewhere the fire is a main concern. So, lots of accident happen uh, for this particular fire thing. Recently, we have observed some uh, damage due to fire for the wooden structure, some uh, historic structure. Then also it prone to the moisture if it is not properly seasoned or some treatment or some some kind of paint uh, being there. So, along with that also there are problem with the termite attack. So, we have to prevent that and now uh, exactly it is not really very hard to uh, extend and so that we cannot really go for multi story building or a complicated structure in that and limits on the shape and size that already I mentioned. Uh, because it is not really available of infinite length or shape, but due to the advantage of easily join principle. So, we can actually make uh, this as power our need. So, this is one example of Olympic in Canada Olympic uh, indoor stadium uh, in Canada. So, they have used that you know wooden structure. So, you can find that how uh, you know if you uh, just take a close look or you can search this uh, you know more pictures on this that how nicely they have joined this and these are acting like uh, you know the support like the beam and then you know uh, they used this particular wooden member structural member to create this kind of architecture. This is another example of that it is uh, from the example of Chicago where uh, like you know this is again those you know external supports they are being created with the wood. But the quality of wood depends because in the market there are different variety of wood and again like there is a controversy like though uh, we have mentioned that it is renewable reusable, but again it is something like against the nature. So, in order to get that wood we have to cut the tree. So, uh, normally it is not being preferred uh, as building material. Now, come to the masonry. So, it is basically a com composite material consisting of brick or brick like block it may be of mud or it may be of you know uh, sun dried brick or it may be uh, the burnt brick or the stone and which is bedded in mortar. Now, what is mortar? I guess uh, you have idea, but mortar is a mixture uh, where uh, normally we use some you know binder and then uh, fine aggregate. Okay, so, binder and fine aggregate means here uh, when you refer it to cement mortar. So, it is basically the cement and sand we add adequate water to make this you know uh, mortar in that. If it is lime mortar, so lime is actually used in state of cement earlier it was there still the cement was not there in the picture. To form the columns, walls, arches, wall domes and in uh, till the Romanics and other uh, age architecture 
extensive use of masonry was there. So, bricks as I mentioned it may be baked earth, it may be the concrete brick nowadays we are using it like uh, we use the concrete brick or also sometimes we use the compressed brick, uh, the fly ash brick. So, as a material, so it is having good compressive strength. So, it will resist again the compression, but the problem is with the tension. So, in tension it will actually not really good. So, the way out is to add something more, we will come to that how we can add those and again it is heavy material required skilled uh, labor to use and that to you know increase the cost. Okay. So, it will also increase the cost and here you can see how beautifully they can do it and with masonry without any reinforcement or any other superior structural uh, system, uh, there is something the restriction on the height and again uh, like if it is not properly plastered or treated, it is also exposed to the weather that may damage it. The example uh, is uh, in front of you, this is the great wall of China. So, which is the masonry work and uh, you know the essence of is the you know this importance of this structure. So, come to the other one that is a, a cathedral here also it is based on the masonry work it is from history and uh, again this is something like from India and again it is uh, a masonry work of a uh, stone. So, this is a nice piece. So, uh, it being used uh, regularly at that particular time when reinforcement and other thing was not in picture. This is another example where you can see that used of the brick as material and then you can see that uh, okay. So, Fort uh, Jefferson that how they have used this masonry work okay, with uh, your brick and then uh, you know, mortar. Now, come to the concrete. So, concrete is another invention in the history of building construction and then the overall scenario has changed. So, it is a combination of your uh, water, then cement as your uh, you know binder, the small aggregate or fine aggregate it may be sand. So, in place of cement we may also use lime. So, earlier they used to uh, get this lime as a material, then large aggregate is basically the stone chip of different size. So, that is forming the concrete and we refer it to PCC. So, basically plain cement concrete. So, in this case there is no reinforcement and it is very versatile as because we are mixing and when it is uh, just mix it is in semi liquid form. So, we can give any shape. So, there is no restriction on the shape and sizes. Uh, then uh, it is also good at high compression, you know, uh, stress taking capacity. So, good in compression, but poor in tension that uh, similar to the, you know, masonry work. Then having good fire resistance property that help that improve also, then flexible with size and shape because of it is can be mold in any form and usually takes longer curing time. This is very important the curing time. So, what is curing time exactly? So, when we make cement with uh, water, so there is reaction. So, uh, heat generates and all and for that you know from the application to its final setting time when it will able to achieve the strength. Uh, so, that particular time uh, we need to weight the uh, you know concrete. So, mostly you uh, if you see that uh, roof is being cast with the concrete and after the next day onwards they spray water or they just you know uh, fill that particular roof with the water. So, that uh, it will get all the moisture required at that time of you know setting. Then uh, after its final setting, so it will not uh, really allow uh, the water. If we do not do that to dur during this particular reaction, so there is lots needs of moisture and it will develop some cracks. So, in our in order to avoid those cracks, we have to cure it. So, curing will take time and unless 
we just give that time we cannot proceed further. So, that is something uh, we can see a drawback of using concrete as a building material and as because it is poor in tension at the same time it fails in shear unless reinforced. So, we have one way out uh, how you can improve it. So, this is one example from the Colosseum Rome where uh, this being used uh, in history. This is another one uh, the great example again from the Rome this is the Pantheon. So, the huge dome being constructed with a nice framework you can able to see that how it being done and then putting the concrete as material. But that time it was not the cement one uh, available. So, they made it. Now, come to the steel as a material. So, it is having good tensile as well as compression uh, and this tensile uh, property actually uh, help us to come out from uh, different option. So, in this case uh, this also has elastic property uh, that we discussed that it can uh, get its original shape after releasing the force ductile property which also you know this all these good properties with the steel and also flexible with the size and shapes as because we can prefabricate we can uh, make as per the design, but it is expensive. So, we are getting so much things. So, somewhere we have to make a trade off. So, it is expensive to others, but uh, again the problem is of if it is not properly uh, treated. So, the problem of the rust, impurities in this and the fire. So, for higher uh, temperature or some explosion or something. So, it will be some problem. So, steel as a material is really advanced material and for that we can go high rise, we can increase the height. So, one great example and this could be one of the eye opener of you know this kind of you know structure using steel. Come to the other one, this is uh, again a uh, reef structure where mainly the structure uh, is formed with the steel and then the glass has just uh, to cover it up. So, Eiffel Tower and this uh, building in Germany, they are the example where steel were used as a material. Now, the reinforced concrete is basically we take the advantage of concrete that is concrete is good in compression and steel is good in tension. So, we take the advantage between uh, like uh, what are the advantages of individual one and group them together. So, if you take a concrete block and you put the pressure on top and these are the supports, so it will try to bend very easily. So, tension developed at the bottom like when you bend it. So, first uh, no, tension will develop at the bottom because you can see like the fibers they can go away from each other and the top in compression. So, compression can be well taken by the concrete and then if you add the reinforcement at the bottom. Okay. So, this will well take care of the tension. So, your structure will maintain uh, the static equilibrium and uh, can form the frame structure for the multi story being used flexible with size and shape as both the material can be used in any form any shape. So, this is a nice example of our reinforced concrete structure the sail structure being used similar kind of structure being used in Sydney Opera House. This is another auditorium from Spain they are also the sail structure the reinforcement reinforced concrete being used as a structural material. So, we can do wonders with this reinforced concrete. Uh, as a material where we can uh, use both. Apart from that there are some composite material which are now people looking for the lightweight uh, material to be used. So, instead of uh, you know uh, the increasing dead load with the steel. So, glass fiber reinforced then other kind of fiber reinforced polymer being used then plastic as a material then carbon fiber as a material. So, many such uh, different composite material can also be used in this, but depending on the property where we use and looking at the six properties of this you know ductility, elasticity, hardness, toughness, then your strength, density. So, we will pick up which one 
to be picked up. Now for the wood, so it may be a raw wood, it may be a processed wood, it may be a medium density fiber. So depending on our uh, expectation and the you know purpose, we'll use it. So these are some examples uh, in random examples where GFRC is used, then carbon fiber is used, which will really uh, give the uh, you know resistance of the axial strain, prevent the uh, you know collapse in shearing. Compressed art can also make the structure not the high rise, but it can solve, which will reduce the cost and also make it very sustainable. So overall, today's uh, lecture. So what we found that. Uh, to select a material is very important thing and we have to look for your strength, then you have density, then you have hardness, then you have ductility, then elasticity and then you have the tough uh, you know toughness of the material. So, ductility or the brittleness is another property looking into that we have also discussed the timber, we use concrete we use the brick or stone machinery, we use the steel as a material and then RCC reinforced cement concrete together then we also discuss about some advanced or you know light weight composite material. So, with that we will see and time to time when we discuss uh, various form or various type of structural uh, you know construction. So, we also link it with this material. So, this is one of the very important uh, lecture that we discussed today and for further reading you can refer to the books I have mentioned and uh, next followed up lecture will be the structural typology. So, uh, we will again discuss that in uh, um, the next lecture, lecture number 16 and for that uh, till that time I again thank you to take part in this particular course. Thank you.